Yo, what's up everybody and welcome to video number four where I'm going to introduce you to the Dataset API. Now we have been using data frames in our previous examples, but a data frame is just a special type of data set. Now the data sets is the main abstraction that's introduced by Spark SQL and that's what we are using all the time when we write Spark SQL code. Spark SQL in turn is an abstraction introduced on top of Spark Core's RDDs, Resilient Distributed Datasets. But we will talk about this architecture and the execution model of Spark later on in this video series. What we need to understand now is if we are creating a data set or a data frame, the relation we are going to explore in this video as well, we are using the Spark SQL's abstraction about a distributed data set. So it's a partitioned data set. And Spark also introduces an API which we can use on this data sets. Now the data set API introduces a DSL, a domain specific language, which is declarative and is used by Spark to translate our code into the in Spark internals so that Spark can um, execute our workload on the cluster um, most efficiently. So we are not using the Scala internal functions and methods, but rather we use the functions and methods provided by the dataset API to tell Spark what we are planning to do with the data. Yeah, and that's actually how we tell Spark what we want to do with the data. So Spark can take care of that and optimize our plans and schedule this work, schedule this workload on the cluster for us. Now in this video, we are going to explore that a data frame is basically only a type definition of being a data set of rows, whereas a row is a quite generic domain object. So anything could be inside a row. So therefore we refer to data frames as being untyped views on our data. However, more accurately, it would be called a generically typed view on the data. All right, let's head over to our IDE and I'm going to open the file that we've been editing previously. Now we wanted to explore what a data frame is from within the Spark code or the, the Spark documentation. And we can introduce a type label here because our ZSV loader loads actually a data frame. That's what we have been using. And I can import this here into my file and then resolve it by pressing Control B in IntelliJ on a Mac. And here we can see in the package object of the SQL package, we can see a type definition, which says that a data frame is just a type um, placeholder for being a data set of row. So it's a special type of data set. And a data set is a typed yeah, collection of data and it's actually a generic class with a type T. And if you're using a data frame, the type T is just um, yeah, fixed to a, a generic row type. So you can think of a data frame as being a collection of generic rows. So you have many rows like you would have in an SQL table or in a list in Scala. Um, but here we have an abstraction, so it's not directly a list, but rather it's an abstraction introduced by Spark because we are actually dealing with distributed data, which may be distributed on a cluster. And therefore we have this abstraction layer introduced by Spark. Now, if we head over to the row class, so I can simply open a class here um, by pressing Control and O to open a file. And here we can inspect the row type, which is actually here. Now, as I said before, a row is a generic record, which defines the columns or the fields we have in each of the rows. And therefore it also has a schema, which we know already from the last video. And it doesn't surprise us because our data frame had a schema as well. So in the schema is stored, which fields exist and what data type they have. 
And the row also defines um, some getters, so we can retrieve values from each of the columns in a row, either by using the index and the apply method, or we could also retrieve them with the respective data type. So here, we, for example, we want to retrieve a Boolean field or the value in a Boolean field by specifying the index of the field. So to wrap up this video, the important things were that there is a data set API, which is the main abstraction introduced by Spark SQL. Now Spark SQL in turn builds up on top of Spark Core's RDDs, Resilient Distributed Datasets, and we are going to explore their connection later in this video course. So the data set API is basically an abstraction over a distributed data set, which may be distributed on an entire cluster. And the data set API provides us with a declarative API or with a, a domain specific language, which we use to tell Spark what we would like to do with the data in the data set. The data frame in turn is just a, a type placeholder for being a data set of the generic type row. So a row can hold pretty much everything. So it's quite generically defined and it has a schema and it has getters to retrieve values from a row.